And that's it. We did it. Tier 100 <laughs> that was so much easier than I thought. I was waiting for a boss to come at the end and that was it. Oh my gosh. Nightmare Grandmaster. Uh, let's look at all the crazy gear we got from doing this tier 100 nightmare dungeon. All right, here is our build for the tier 100 nightmare dungeon that we cleared uh, pretty easily. And uh, not only was it great for the tier 100, but this build is so fast for anything below. You could, you could speed farm just about any dungeon with this build and it is even strong enough for tier 100. Uh, I'll go through what I have and maybe <laughs> some of the, my suggestions for making it even tankier, especially if you're a hardcore player. Um, but it was really easy and we killed that dungeon so fast and it was um, not really much of a, of a challenge. I'm going to move my camera over while we go over the gear. So this is the gear that I'm using, uh, that I was using for the, the build. Uh, we've got... Uh, stolen Vigor on the helm, and this is going to provide uh, such good survivability. Uh, we're running the key passive momentum, and it's really easy to maintain your momentum charges. You'll notice momentum, you get other really great benefits. So having Stolen Vigor, especially for pushing the late tier, was really nice to have. If you're just using this to speed run uh, lower Nightmare Dungeons, then... Uh, you could probably drop this. It's only needed when you, you push really high content, but it's really nice for sustain. Uh, for aspects, we've got poison imbue, armor, and a bunch of survivability. Cooldown is one of the great aspects you can get on, on your helm as well. But you'll notice where we can, we have survivability on our gear. This is helping us push to the higher tier nightmare dungeons. Chestplate, all survivability. Really great rolls on this one and uh, might aspect to get additional damage reduction. Uh, we're often using our puncture attack, as you'll see. So we're constantly having this up and getting 20% damage reduction. Fists of Fate was, were a meme. I wasn't using those <laughs> for the video. Uh, shared Misery on the gloves. Shared Misery is giving us a ton of CC. Uh, you'll notice that when we enter a room, we can just start on that very, very first monster, hitting him with uh, Twisting Blades, and it'll spread to everywhere so really great for these high tier nightmare dungeons just getting everything to stay still so you can go in and kill it again only for the high tier nightmare dungeons do i recommend using shared misery uh, but the gloves are great no matter what you're running twisting blades crit strike attack speed and lucky hit uh, the reason we want lucky hit wherever we can get it as well as crit strike chance is that's how we are proccing the majority of our damage through bursting venoms i'll show you that Pants, we've got Disobedience, more defense. Uh, for a hardcore, or if you want to, you know, just be a little bit safer, you could put this Disobedience aspect on your amulet. Uh, I think that would actually be better. Uh, I think our offense was a little bit overkill. So uh, we don't necessarily need accelerating on our amulet. Maybe we could have switched it to the gloves and, and moved our, mo our, our aspects around a little bit. But we were speed clearing before this, so we just tried it out and it ended up being really great but our, our damage was overkill so you could always switch disobedience to the amulet that would probably be my suggestion uh, so if i do my build planner i might have disobedience on the amulet slot just because i think that that's probably the better move uh, penance and greaves more cc so this chilling uh, uh cc is spreading through shared misery as well uh, which is really great really nice and uh, additional damage uh two-hander We've got uh, Corruption on this, uh, just to boost our damage really, really high. 80% uh, Imbuement effect, Poison Imbue is our main source of DPS. Uh, so that is why we're using using it. And uh, Damage Over Time Jewels, because we focused solely on Poison to deal our damage. Uh, we've got Damage Over Time Jewels to increase that Poison damage. For rolls, all stats is great, Dexterity is great, Vulnerable is great. And we're using damage to close. We ended up, we were just rolling mods on this and got a perfect damage to close. And uh, so that's what we use, 70% damage. Just nuts. Uh, amulet. So accelerating, uh, obviously. Uh, we said maybe you could run disobedience for the aspect, but uh, the, the, the mods are really important. So we've got energy cost reduction. Uh, that's really nice. All imbuements. That's good for your damage. Weapon mastery as well is good for damage. Weapon mastery, you don't need uh, per se, 
you could always replace this with uh, something like armor would be great or more damage reduction. Uh, you do want to pick up some damage reduction on your amulet to help with the tier 100 specifically. Uh, so you'll notice I have damage reduction from poisoned enemies here. Most of the time, the things that are scary are going to be poisoned. Uh, so you'll get to benefit from that mod. It's It could be better. My amulet could be better. But this is what we had. So this is what we went with. Rings. Crit chance, lucky hit, and resource gen are great. Uh, vulnerable as well for more damage uh but this is basically the this is i think a pretty perfect ring for this because you get to sustain your twisting blades you'll notice we're using combo points um so we want to get as much resource generation as possible so you'll notice we get resource generation here we get the resource cost reduction on the amulet uh, and this is allowing us to just constantly use twisting blades and not really having to worry about sustain on our energy then we have uh Pestilent points. So this is very important for Nightmare Dungeons specifically in combination with Bursting Venoms. So the aspect on our ring was Bursting Venoms. Whenever this Bursting Venoms procs, we get to unlimited expand Poison Imbue. Well, in case we use our Poison Imbue and don't proc Bursting Venoms with the first cast, we have Pestilent points that make it so our Puncture can now apply Poison Imbue which is very important because that is giving us additional chances to proc Bursting Venom. So this is keeping our DPS up and keeping it high, which is somewhat important for tier 100s because you do have to kill it. Surviving is only part of the battle, but you need to deal enough damage and you saw our, you'll see our damage was very, very significant. Um, Blade Dancers on the one-hander. Uh, you can use, uh, since we, we ended up focusing on all poison damage, you could use a dagger here instead of a sword. I've been sort of a mix up until here of physical and poison damage. So I was using, you know, a sword, but a dagger works just as well, even better. Uh, the mods, these are good mods. You could do core damage instead of close, uh, but, oh, instead of like crit strike, you don't really need the crit strike damage if you're not focused on physical uh, so you could replace this with a dagger with like core damage uh, instead of crit. Uh, that would be good. And all stats is a great mod as well. So uh, on the offhand, we have Ashiras. Um, what more do we need to say about Ashiras? You get a, a bunch of attack speed, lucky hit, which is really important for the build. And uh, and it's a dagger. It attacks really nice and fast. Damage to crown control, you benefit from a little bit as well. Specialization, we said earlier, combo points. And this is our skill tree. Uh, I will have the planner up if you just want to see the skill tree. But I'm going to go through and sort of explain a little bit of what we did. So uh, fundamental puncture, you know, I'm just... To explain everything, we're using this to apply vulnerable. Uh, it is also applying our pestilent points. So very important. We're using this skill a lot. It's building up our combo points. Fundamental puncture is fundamental to this build. Uh, and it can't be overstated enough. Sometimes it's more important to be spamming your fundamental puncture than it is to spam your twisting blades. If you don't have poison imbue up, spamming your twisting blades with this build is not going to be dealing damage. Okay. You want to make sure that your poison is always up and fundamental puncture is another way to apply it thanks to the new aspect. Twisting blades and we're getting the dazed affix. So daze on our twisting blade is how we are spreading CC to the entire room. Uh, sturdy and siphoning strike, you got to get sturdy uh, for defense. So this, these are great defensive aspects. Uh, for Shadow Step, we're using the cooldown. So Shadow Step is our way to escape uh, CC, which is very important. And Dash. Weapon Mastery, we don't have any points in there. That's just from our amulet. Poison Trap, uh, we get Knockdown. So Poison Trap is not only providing CC through Knockdown, uh, it is also spawning our... show you our decoy so that's actually important i should go over the hearts so let's let's go over the wrathful hearts we're using uh creeping death in the amulet so very important for damage this is giving us so much damage everything's going to be cc the cc is going to spread this is just pure damage for our poison so really really great really strong uh wrathful heart uh i think for the purposes of the tier 100 best in slot 
for Rogue. Uh, our blue hearts are Revenge, which is giving us 20% damage reduction. The effect where it is exploding is not as important. Uh, I like to use this to sort of help build up my stacks for uh, disobedience and also applying vulnerable to everything with exploit. Uh, but really the important thing is 20% damage reduction and you see it there. And then this is also so important. Trickery, Wrathful Heart. This decoy is giving us so much survivability, especially in tier 100s. You want to have that decoy to take the pressure off. So this will be hugely important. And, uh, and that is the reason why in order to use this, you have to use a subterfuge skill. And we've always been using poison trap, but again, just to, to really, uh, emphasize the importance of poison trap, uh, we're using it to spawn our decoys as well. And then we'd go with the extra 10% damage exploit damage, just more damage poison imbue go with, uh, the crit strikes are dealing more poison damage, precision imbuement for more crit chance. Crit chance is combining, you know, is synergizing with our bursting venoms to just get more poison pulls down so we can spam this poison imbuement. Uh, we were using, uh, three points into debilitating toxins, uh, for extra damage reduction, one point deadly venom, one point of acmal advantage. Uh, and this is for attack speed. You're often getting crowded around. A lot of stuff's going to be poisoned. You really only need one or two points here to achieve the maximum benefit. So we just throw a point in there for some extra attack speed. Here we have haste. Haste is great just for energy regen, getting from pack to pack. Trap mastery for in increased crit chance, which we need for bursting venoms. Uh, this is great sustain innervation since we already run so much lucky hit. It's great to have. And this is just better chance of lucky hit. We want a lot of lucky hit. And then for our skill tree, momentum. We are running momentum. This is synergizing with obviously our um, stolen vigor, which is giving us a ton of regen, but it also gives us damage reduction, energy regen, mana, mana uh, movement speed. And uh, it's really just great for running dungeons in general and uh, the damage reduction really helps for the high tier ones let's go through the paragon board so we start off with closer closer is giving us cutthroat damage so that's our um, twisting blade damage which is scaling everything uh, and then in addition to that we get a little bit of damage reduction some important nodes we pick up armor wherever we can so we've added these armor nodes in specifically for the tier 100 uh, you'll notice I dropped exploit weakness in favor of coming up here and just grabbing more armor. Armor is very important for this build. So we picked up armor wherever we could, uh, where it made sense. Combat is not as important for the crit strike damage because we're focused on poison, but it is still very important for the energy cost uh, regen. So cr skills that critically strike, we have huge critical strike will give us 12% of our energy cost back. We still want to run combat here to get that sustained so that we can spam our twisting blades when we have poison imbuement up. Here we go through, pick up some more damage. This is all damage. Here we've got tracker for a bunch of poison damage. We've got some damage reduction nodes up here. We go down for exploit. This is how we're applying our vulnerable and we get decent vulnerable damage. Here we pick up damage nodes and survivability nodes. And our deadly ambush, um, our deadly ambush board, we pick up deadly ambush on our way to Bane. Bane is again, massive amounts of damage poison damage the ability you you also achieve the ability to do double damage for your poison so our poison damage is just absolutely off the charts here and uh and bane really helps with that and then we come to our uh, tricks of the trade board here we're going with turf 
turf is giving us uh, damage to close and more damage reduction. And then we go for a, a, a few of the the damage reduction nodes here. We get we pick up armor, armor. Here, if we had, you know, uh, if we had all stats on our one-hander, we might even be able to pick up Lawless here. Uh, you could also run like an incense and get 40 strength and, and then get another 100 armor just from this. So that might have been something that we should have done uh, for our, our tier 100 clear, but uh, we got it without it. But this Lawless is very achievable as well to, to grab. So that is the Paragon board. That is the skill tree. We went over the specializations. I'll just go through real quick so you can see exactly what all of my stats are at the moment. Oh, and before this wears off, I used Increase Armor Potion with the uh, with the ability this season to increase your potions by 50%. It's nice to just pop one of these on when you're running those real high tier dungeons and uh, gives you some extra extra armor. So I'm just going to go through all my stats because I've been asked in the past to just go through real quick so you can compare to yours. This has everything from the Paragon board built in and all my items and all my gear. So just a great reference if you're trying to make this build yourself. And that's it. So I hope you guys get your uh, your your completion of a tier 100 this season if that was a goal. If not, Maybe you could use this build just for general speed farming. I had a great time doing tier 100. Uh, we've got tier 100. We've got Lilith down. What's left, right? We're gonna we're gonna keep uh, blasting Rogue and enjoying the game. So follow along if you'd like, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. We just crafted our first tier 100. Uh, Carnal House is what we rolled, and it has Empowered Elites, Cold Enchanted, which is a affix that is getting removed going forward, but. Hey, we'll give it a try. So um, our first tier 100 of the season, let's see how it goes. The build has been performing pretty well up until this point. Uh, we cleared a 97 so far and we haven't found anything higher, but uh, this tier 100 is the highest that we found. We set a goal out in the beginning of the season to conquer the tier 100 dungeon. And so that's what we're gonna try to do. We added in a lot of CC to the build through shared misery and uh, as well as some extra defense in Stolen Vigor. Right now, we are still fairly offensive focused. Um, I think maybe Disobedience on the Amulet is where we could go if we need even more defense, but we're gonna try it as is for now. The Cold Enchanted scares me initially, so we'll see how that goes. There's a ton of cold enchanted in there. All right. Oh yeah. I feel it. Let's build up our disobedience. It's important to have your disobedience stacks maxed. Okay. We can attract aggro away thanks to our trickery aspect uh, from the malignant heart. Uh, getting that aggro off of us and onto our decoy is very helpful for spreading our CC effects. Okay, we set it up, let everything go and attack the decoy. And then we apply our poison. Melt it all. Again, we could have gone even more defensive focused if we need to. Probably if you're hardcore, you'll definitely want to go more on the defensive side. 
So I would recommend making that change for sure. We want to just constantly be applying our CC effects. They have the same idea. <laughs> These cold enchanted mobs. Hey, not too bad though. We have a ton of uh, life sustain and regen through Stolen Vigor, so we were able to survive all of that. Building up your momentum charges is very, very easy with the build, thanks to Twisting Blades. You always want to be aware of your surroundings, sometimes slower is better. You don't want to get overwhelmed. And you can always start with just one mob and have your... All the CC effects that you've applied just spread to the entire room. It's really, really nice. Shared Misery has been a great uh, sort of utility aspect to add in a ton of survivability to the build. Less things attacking you, the better. Okay, one prisoner left. A lot of stuff in here. Let's get the aggro onto our clone. And then take it down. So if you're not using Stolen Vigor and you're having issues with potions, if your goal is just to clear one of these and not do it, you know, super fast or anything like that, you always go back to town and refill your potions. It doesn't cost you a revive. But we're sustaining quite well with the Stolen Vigor aspect. A lot of people had been in my stream recommending it for Nightmare Dungeons, and I didn't really see the need uh, for the lower tier dungeons, but... For the higher tier stuff, definitely feels nice. You just sort of stay in the middle of everything. Regen. More life than you're taking in most cases. And I mean, this is a tier 100 dungeon. And feels pretty good. What do we have here? Travel to the feeding pit. All right. Destroy the corpse piles. Not bad. I sometimes I get myself in trouble with with the objectives because I'll tend to run them fast. But again, you want to make sure you never get too overwhelmed too too hard. Ooh, what am I standing in? Okay, there's a corpse pile. The decoy provides a great distraction for these areas. Usually there are a decent amount of mobs around these corpse piles. So. Okay, we got another one. One left. It's not a race. Just take it nice and slow, nice and easy. Don't want to get overwhelmed. And it looks like it's the last one potentially. And that's it! We did it! Tier 100 oh, that was so much easier than I thought. I was waiting for a boss to come at the end, and that was it. Oh my gosh. Uh, Alright, let's look at the uh, crazy gear. That was the first one we've ever done. Look at that. Nightmare Grandmaster. Uh, let's look at all the crazy gear we got from doing this Tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon. 
All right, perfect expectant aspect, not bad. Almost perfect mangler aspect. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, we can almost max out our final glyphs, Bane. Uh, we didn't even have that fully maxed, but uh, this ended up doing pretty good.